Hey viewers, welcome to episode 9 of my MATLAB programming course. Today we are taking a look at our first program that is actually going to do something. And well, this is part 1 of that I should mention right now because I didn't want to complete it all in one session. It will probably be a little bit too much to understand straight off. So we're going to just go through it step by step and then see what it results in. And next time we will continue on with the same program trying to fix the problems. And if you want to kind of work with me, so if you want to learn how to do these things, just copy paste the program and make your own solution to the problems that we're running into. So we're obviously not running into problems here, top right, it is green. Everything will run, the problem is only the program doesn't work as we want it to. So what do we want to get? This program is meant to do one thing and I will show you. There is our picture, we're loading in this picture. And what we want is we want to have one color ball pop up on our screen. So basically if I click a red ball, then I want all the red balls to be selected, but none of the others. If I select the purple ball, all the purple balls and none of the others. So don't know if it can actually be done with this particular picture, but in theory it can be done. Because we as humans can pick out the right balls, so our computer should be able to do the same thing. Because everything a human can do, a computer should be able to do as well. It's just that maybe it's a lot of work, maybe it takes a lot of exceptions. So you have to program very specific exceptions because that's how our brains work. They work on exceptions mainly. And yeah, maybe it just is very hard to do, but it can be done. So we'll see in the next episode whether we can actually, well, proceed with this. Anyway, what I'm doing here is first of all, we do CLC clear close all. That's kind of standard procedure by now. Uh, we are st starting off by loading in the picture. I already did that. Pixels is imread balls.jpg. Obviously balls.jpg is in the same directory as my program is. And it's going to load it in. It's going to put all of the values in pixels. So pixels is just, well, there. It has all the values in it. Then we're opening figure one and we're showing pixels, which is an image, because I loaded it as an image. So far, so up till this point, it is a uint8. You can see it if you hover over it, uint8. But you cannot calculate with uint8. I already told you this, but you might have forgotten. So you need to convert it to a double. That's what the next line is all about. So pixels is double of pixels and double means that it's now a number it's not an integer anymore it's an it's a double so you can have numbers behind the well the decimal point so first of all we're going to find out the number of rows number of columns and we do that by uh, making a vector of well this is uh, the actual vector a vector of all rows that's the uh, column then a one for the column because I only want one column and number one for the color because I only want one color. So the length of this vector is the number of rows that we have because we selected all rows, only one column, only one color. And we're doing the same thing for our, um, our columns. We're selecting one row only, all columns and then one color. So you can also pick color two or three, and you can pick uh, row number two or four or a hundred or whatever. I'm just using one because I know one exists. So now we have two numbers, now we know the dimensions of our picture, and now we can work from that. First of all, we're going to ask the user for an input, like G input. G input allows us to put a cursor on top of the uh, of the picture and basically allows us to click the picture. If I click him with right, left, middle mouse, mouse button, it doesn't matter, it will register it. Um, that's G input. So I'm only asking for one input because I only want one color selected in the picture. And then I'm going to save the row and the column that I actually picked. So 
going from there, we have one last thing. We have the button that was pressed. I'm not going to use that, so I'm putting a tilde there. And the tilde will actually just stay there. It will. It means that there is an output. I know there is an output. I'm just not using it. So the program will not say, well, you didn't use that. No, it just knows I'm not going to use that. But I did tell the program, yes, I know there's a third output. I just don't want the third output. Now we're going to close the picture because I know, or the figure, sorry, because I know it is, well, figure number one, I gave it that number. I can target the picture or the figure, sorry. So I'm closing one. Then after that, we're going to say uh, the row that I selected has to be rounded. The column ha has to be rounded as well, because you can actually select like half of the column. And you will run into an error. If you do not, if you do, not do this, you will run into an error. And you will have to do it anyway, because it won't run that. Anyhow, we're going to see what color did we select. So we have three color layers, one, two, and three. So red, green, and blue. And so I'm naming them color one, color two, color three. It's not that much of a mystery. Then this I'm going to explain later. It's a threshold number. Um, you will have to play around with it. I'm not done with it yet, but for now it's set to 30. And you will see what it does in a moment when, well, I'll explain what it does in a moment and then after we run the program once, I will show you what it does if I actually well, make it lower or higher. Anyhow, new pixels, which is my new figure, my new image, is zeros, which means that it's black if we regard it as an image. If I make this uh, 255 times once, uh, because you, you only have two, you have zeros and you have ones like this. Uh, once means it's all, well, once, so every entry is a one. Uh, zeros means every entry is a zero. Obviously, if you make once and you multiply it with something, you can make any number. So if you make it 255 times once size pixels, then you have everything white, which can be fun as well. I might actually show that to you later if I remember. Um, yeah, size pixels just means all of the dimensions are taken from pixels, and pixels was our original, uh, well, figure, no, image. Uh, pixels was our original image. We want our new image to be the same size. So it also has three colors. It has the same number of rows, same number of columns. Then, this is the heart of our program, because all, all the things up till now are just blah. We are going through every row and every column, which means just because it's, it's a nested for loop, well, two nested for loops, I guess. Um, we are going through every pixel, and we're going to check every pixel whether or not it matches the color. It's, it's as easy as that. It's nothing more than that. It's just looking at every pixel and seeing, is this the right color? Is it not the right color? The differences between the colors, obviously we need red, green, and blue for that. Maybe we don't. I don't know. Maybe next episode we will see that it can be done in a different way, which is more effective. But for now we have difference one is the color, uh, color one minus the pixels. Uh, so the pixel we currently are inspecting, only the red value of that. So you, we do those for red, green, and blue, color one, two, and three. And then we take the absolute value because we don't want minus in there. We just want the difference to be a certain number. And yeah, absolute value is of course, well, always positive. So if the, the number is positive, then it stays the same. If the number is negative, it becomes the positive of that. So it is multiplied by minus one. Then we get three differences. The three differences are the differences in color compared to our, the color that we wanted to have. So now we're going to compare those differences to the threshold that we set. It's currently at 30. And maybe we need three different thresholds. One for red, one for green, one for blue. But for now we're going to see if the color has uh, is within the threshold value of... Uh, so it's not too different basically from the red 
and is not too different from the blue, that's this one, and it's not too different from the green, oh sorry, this is green, this is blue of course, um, then we're going to say, well, it's probably the same color. So it's not really intelligent up till now. Maybe we will introduce that later. I have some ideas of how to kind of influence this, kind of make this better. And then we're going to say, if the thing is indeed very close to our original color, then we're going to say new pixels, uh, so the current pixel of our, um, our new image is the current pixel that we're inspecting from our old image. So basically we're going to take the pixel and put it in the new figure. If it's not, as you can see there is no else, if it's not it just stays black. So yeah, if it's not close to our original um, color, it will just stay black. And, well, last thing we do, well, we run through this for every pixel, as I said. So then we're here, we're opening figure 2, and we're showing the U int 8, which means, well, I just want everything to be between 0 and 255, uh, of new pixels, which is our new image. And then we're going to pause here, that's why there's one eye here. It, um, it doesn't mean anything. It's just for me to be able to put a breakpoint there. So... If we run this, we're going to see that, well, the, the thing pop up, you can uh, enlarge it if you want to. And I'm going to select a red ball, it doesn't matter. And obviously now it doesn't want to close, because I don't know why. It should close, obviously, because we said close one. Now it's, uh, it's going to take a while to, uh, to do the entire thing because I took a, a picture, uh, an image that is pretty big. Um, it will become faster once it loaded everything in. As you can see, it now selected the red balls, but there are all kinds of, of big things in the middle. Also here is a ball that's not entirely selected, also here is a ball that's not entirely selected. It may be because there are no balls here. Uh, so Maybe this is just a red glare from this ball uh, that is on this ball. So it's kind of a reflection. It could be because it's close to this one, it's close to this one, and it doesn't show over here. But if we look at the original picture, so it's over here somewhere. You can see whether or not it is actually a red dot. Oh, yeah, I paused it. Um, so, yeah, it was over here. And you can see it's just a little bit of red, uh, well, kind of reflecting from other balls. If we uh, look at another one, let's do a purple one. I'm selecting, uh, well, the darker colors, so not the light spots on them, because the light spots are obviously causing those middle parts of the balls to be, well, unselected. So we might want to fix that at some point. So maybe we need to fix that. Maybe we're just saying, well, you shouldn't be stupid and you shouldn't select the white part. But we can, f we can do both. So we can choose what we want. Here you can see a lot of reflective uh, edges, but a lot of balls get selected. Just the middle part is not selected. That is a pretty big deal. And yeah, th those reflective edges have to be removed as well. So we're going to do one more. Um, we're going to select yellow. I don't know, just to show you that it actually works the way it's supposed to work. And this is all live, so if something goes wrong, I'm just going to keep it in. I'm just going to tell you how I'm going to solve it, and I'm going to try to solve it. But for now, it's doing what it's supposed to do. As you can see, there are a lot of yellow balls in the bottom right, and in the top part, there are also a lot of yellow balls. But yeah, well, yellow balls are everywhere, and you can see it almost selects all of them perfectly, except for the middle part. And that we can solve pretty easily. If you have any ideas on that, so if you think that you know how to solve the problem of getting those centers, please leave a comment, because I'm really wondering whether you uh, can grasp, well, how this works. So 
how do I get this to work properly? How do I get the entire ball? Because the edges work pretty well. It's just the middle that's screwed up. And we know why it's screwed up, because if we look at the original, which is um, over here, then you can see that if I select a yellow ball, then the edges are kind of dark. But the further we go to the middle, the whiter it becomes. And in the middle, it's white. By the way, if I select a white, I will, I will do that. Then that should be fun. Um, let me select this white. If I select a white, obviously it's going to run into trouble. But you will see that because every ball that is on top has uh, a white spot. So it's going to select all the white spots. And maybe some of the yellow, maybe some of the orange, but none of the, dar the darker colors, obviously. But it's going to select every ball that has that white spot. And here you can see that all of the white spots get selected. But well, in this case, only the, the yellow ones even. So my threshold is low enough to allow me to do that. Well, let's do one more, well, a couple of more. I'm going to set this to 10. And yeah, I'm going to remove this. Um, yeah, sure. Save and run. And we're going to select a ball. And now you can see I lowered the threshold. And now we only select, well, parts of the balls. The, the balls are not entirely selected anymore. Top left apparently doesn't have anything. Bottom right doesn't have anything. I don't know if that's actually the case, but we'll see that in a moment. I'm setting this to 50. No, here there are actually purple balls that needs to, need to be selected. And I don't know if it selected this one, but it should have selected that. I don't think it got everything. Anyway, um, let's pick a blue one. Yeah, setting it to 50 still works fine for the blue ones. So let's see um, if it actually works for the red ones as well. No, nope. if I do the red ones, the orange ones get selected as well. Not as well, obviously, but it may also have been because, as you might have noticed, yeah, I'll, I'll do it again, I select it here, and this is actually orange. So this part is actually slightly orange. So maybe I just need to select another ball. And maybe I need to just give them a color palette to choose from. Because that could solve a problem as well. If I give them a color palette, so um, I'm saying, uh, I put a, a, instead of this picture where we can see, select, I just put a red tab, a blue tab, a purple tab, a yellow tab, and a green tab. And you can just se select one of those colors. That would be fine as well. It is a solution to my problem. My problem was how to select all of these things. And if I can extract the colors, so the main colors from this uh, picture, put them into a selection menu, and then just say, well, pick your color here. Maybe that'll work. Anyhow, as you can see, the, for the green balls, it doesn't work either because it's selecting the blue balls as well. And yeah, for the blue balls, that will be kind of the same. Oh no, the blue balls were fine. Never mind. Um, oh, the orange. I didn't try the orange yet. The orange will select some of the red, but not a lot, but it will select the yellows. So you see, if I make the threshold too high, then it becomes unstable. If I make it too low, it's not selecting enough. So it needs to be just right. It's Goldilocks, man. It's Goldilocks. It always is. So 30 seems to work pretty well. I just took it. It was my third value that I actually tried. And this seems to work out pretty well, except for those little bit of uh, edges here. The edges need to be removed, but that's really not our concern right now. What we need to concern ourselves with next time is filling in these middle parts. So every ball has that middle part, that shiny center. And as I said, if you have an idea of how to do that, then put it in the comments and um, we'll see what you come up with. Even if it's just like, I don't know, maybe just a thought on, well, maybe you can do it like this or you can do it like this. Um, I'm just looking for your input. I mean, I know how to do this. Uh, for me, it's not too much of a problem, but I'm looking for your input. So anyway, that's it for now. Hope you enjoyed and I will see you next time.